four, three, two, we are live. That's so cool. So very cool. I'm going to bring up the slide just because we're a little early. Share. I'm going to present. <coughs> cool. So, and then we'll get. If anyone's our- on, we were just having a debate about how we were talking about being the Siskel and Ebert of social media, and we were having a debate on who is Siskel who's, and who who's is Siskel, Ebert. Who's Ebert. And you assumed think- that I would be Siskel, and I feel like I would be Ebert. Well, okay. <laughs> I mean, well, maybe was Ebert, would you consider her? <laughs> like, why do you think, well, let's just start, why do you think that you would be Ebert? I just want to know. <laughs> have, you, have you seen the documentary about Roger Ebert? I haven't, and I, I've, okay. been meaning, I've been meaning to. And maybe tonight after the webinar, I will jump on Netflix and I will watch the uh, the, the Ebert uh, documentary. Yes. What, watch that and then let me know if you think I'm Siskel or Ebert between us. Okay. No, I'll okay. do that. Right on. So okay. it's nine. It is. It's nine thirty here on the East Coast. It's six thirty there on the West Coast. That's right. And my name is Jason Weddington, and I am with uh, my friend Diane Beck. And did you like Hello. how I said Beck? <laughs> Hello, Beck. <laughs> oh, instead of Beck, Diane, or dude. Right. Instead of dude. Um, so tonight we are. We decided we have these debates almost, I wouldn't say almost every time that that we're on Skype or Hangouts together, but more often than not, at some point in our conversation, you bring up Twitter. Uh, We, what do you think, like twice, probably every conversation? And I'd say twice a conversation, probably four times a week. Four times a week. And... We sometimes, sometimes I can be a little contrarian. Most of the times I can be a little contrarian about Twitter. So we thought it would be cool to bring it uh, live and share our thoughts and share our conversations with a, a much wider audience. So if you're listening, that's what tonight is all about. Tonight, uh, it's love it or hate it Twitter. Um, we're going to learn maybe some tips on how to use Twitter effectively, right? That's really but, what this is dude, about. What I, what I may I, I want to interject is that you and I have totally different experiences on Twitter. And one of us loves Twitter, and one of us is not too warm on Twitter. Tw- Twitter. Twitter? <laughs> yeah, Twitter. Twitter. That's how I feel sometimes. It's <laughs> <Just> <laughs> not too warm on Twitter right now, right? And so... You know, I thought this would be a great uh, Google Hangout because, you know, I'm way on this other end of the spectrum and I want people to, like, understand why because I feel like there are so many people who are in your boat too. Right. Uh, Yeah, I think so. I think, um, well, and we've talked about that before where, you know, I'm I'm really, I'm trying to warm up to it. I've been, just before we got on live, I was saying how for the last few days after our last Twitter battle... (laughs) I, I was feeling bad about it. I was like, why am I so resistant to Twitter? I've been meditating every single day on shifting my approach to Twitter, shifting my thought process about Twitter to uh, try to abandon my, my old thought processes uh, and try to embrace this social media platform that I do think is valuable. It's not, it's not actually Twitter that's the problem. It's totally me. <laughs> And, okay. you know, I, I recognize that because it, it's, you know, it's like, I think it's any, any social media platform can uh, be beneficial and, and not be beneficial. And regardless of you're using it for your personal, like we use it for personal and we also use it for business, right? So right. how long, like before we really get into any of this stuff, how long have you been using Twitter? I think I've been on Twitter since 2008. Right. So I've been on Twitter since, say, 2008, so say that's seven years, and I only just recently started a separate Twitter account for my business about, ooh, how long has it been? Two months? Yeah. Yeah, about two months. 
Yeah. And so that I'm, you know, it's new for me as far as this approach. But my personal Twitter account, it's been seven years and I've just had great experiences. Right. Right. Yeah, and I've been on it. Um geez, I don't know. For probably at least what is this, 2015? I, I would say I probably joined uh 09, maybe 2010, somewhere around there. And uh really uh haven't dipped my toes into it at all. I, I'm, I'm one of those accounts that was inactive for, like I probably posted like the first day I was on it. It was like, hey, Twitter, I'm here. And then nothing for. <laughs> and let me just say too, you you say you've been on Twitter since 2009, right? I've, I've had an account since 2009. Yes. <laughs> I have had a Twitter account for my business since, what I say, two months? Two months, yeah. I already have, what? three or four times as many followers in two months than you have since 2009. This and with that, let's, let's, let's move ahead. Let's jump in. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to bring up my uh, shared screen again. So the organic we a, followers. We have, so. Yeah, we have, yeah, exactly. No. And I think that's important to, to mention though, that it is organic, that, that you grow your lists by, that you grow your account by. So, um, all right, I'm going to, uh, I think that's okay for everybody to see. So, right, my oh, my oh, Twitter. Oh, sorry, sorry, dude, no, sorry. Go ahead. Um, we talked. So, at, we just want to highlight at the beginning of this that we're going to talk just briefly about your experience, briefly about my experience, some uh, short stories of real life stories that uh, the benefits in real life of what happens or what has happened mm -hmm. in Twitter, and then we're going to end with four. I don't know what would you call them. I would say tips on tips. Uh, using Twitter more effectively. Like we're not social media gurus, and you and you said earlier when we were talking that you're not a social media guru, but right. you do have a Twitter list of about your a Twitter following of about seven thousand, almost eight thousand people on on your personal, and like you said, you are you're almost at a thousand people or over a thousand people now on your business, and it's only been running for two months. So you have a really effective way of targeting and growing your Twitter following. So even though you're not a self-proclaimed guru, you know what the hell you're doing. <laughs> so well, don't, dude, don't try to pretend also, that you don't. <laughs> no, listen also, and I've, I, I said this before, how to me it's not about the number and volume of followers. Right. 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 For me, it's like, I like Twitter because I enjoy the experience right. and of what it has it has manifested in my life, but all right, Absolutely. let's let's go right. for it. Sorry, okay. but I just wanted to it's highlight the agenda is this, you know, experiences sure. and then the tips. Yes, absolutely. So we should now be presenting. Okay, so again, my experience very limited with Twitter. Literally, I feel like even though I've been on, like I said, I have an account for a few years, more than a few years, I really feel like I'm only just now starting to get a handle on Twitter, what it is, an approach to it. Uh, I'm really, I am a newbie when it comes to this platform. I really do feel that, I, I'm, I really am learning. And the reasons behind that is that, the first one is that I feel overwhelmed by the sheer volume of what's going on on Twitter, right? It's, it seems like when I would, when I initially got on there before we started having our conversations and what you're going to talk about a little bit later on, you really have helped me out tremendously about getting a handle on this. I felt really overwhelmed by it. Like you just get on there and the news feed is flying by. People are tweeting like crazy, like a thousand miles an hour. And just the sheer volume of information flying by you is staggering. It really is staggering. And I just felt, and still sometimes I feel overwhelmed by it. Um, the other big hesitation to it, um, we always joke, I can be really verbose. I like to write, <laughs> enjoy writing, and I love my words. And a 140 character barrier is brutal. It's like, it can take me sometimes 10 minutes just to compose a reply to a tweet because I'm like, okay, da, 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 da. I think they call it a Socratic uh, communicator where I can't just give you the, 
you know, the meat of what I need to say. I'm talking about everything surrounding. I need to give you the background story where this I is know. Going. You can't just vomit a ton. You have to be more precise. Yes. And that's, that's a huge barrier to overcome, especially for someone who's not used to communicating like that. And I think I'm not the only person who's like that. And I think that, and I wouldn't say that it scares away people necessarily, but it was interesting. I was listening to, I think I was telling you this story the other day. I was listening to um, Garrison Keeler, the host of A Prairie Home Companion. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was asked a question about storytelling on Twitter. And his response was, you know, it's a horrible way to tell a story, 140 characters. Like, people want more than that. But I think, um, you know, it, it can be a bit of a barrier for people. But it's not a barrier that you can that you can't overcome. It just takes But I time. feel like, I feel when I have, when I have a, a Twitter account that I'm following and I see their feed and I see 140 characters of something sharp and witty just over and over, like, you know, tweet after tweet after tweet, I am just like, oh, this is so awesome. Yeah. It just hits the, Hit, I, and I think it's not the it's not the fact that it's 140 word characters. It's the fact that it's um, it's not easy to do. But when someone does it well, it's it's awesome, man. Absolutely, and I think that's the the interesting thing. And in, um, that I would I would say um, you know that I don't necessarily agree with Kaler's statement about it's not a great way to story tell. I think the story evolves over over time. And if you are following someone over time, then you get a feel for that narrative. So I don't know. It's just, it is a difficult barrier to overcome 140 characters. Let's face it. It's, it's not easy. It's not easy. So, um, so the 140 character barrier was big for me and also like, and still is big for me jumping into conversations. Like it's crazy, but okay. So here's the way that I like to think about Twitter sometimes, right? This is this is me. Why I, I don't like Twitter sometimes is because I feel like I'm walking into a room and every single person is engaged in a conversation and I'm the the strange, awkward guy walking in going, I don't I don't I don't really have anything interesting to say. I feel weird about jumping into the middle of conversations, even though conversations are starting and stopping and popping up left and right you know I just, I just feel weird about it i don't know man i think it's first of all i want to say i think it's hilarious how you changed the verbiage on the deck because originally <laughs> <laughs> originally line number three said and other and other annoyances right <laughs> well i have a lot of annoyances <laughs> with i me. know that's why I, I yeah that's why we had that as you know a dump of and other annoyances yeah, um, so I thought I would just pare that down to, to okay. one. <laughs> to one, your biggest. Yeah, so jump, you know, jumping into conversations, right? I, you, you just can't sit there on your hands and wait to be approached. Right. If right. no one's, you know, approaching you or engaging with you, then, you know, engage with other people. Right. Yeah, and I'm learning how to do that. Again, it's like, it's not natural for me, though. It is not natural. It's not a natural way for me to communicate. I'm just gonna say that right out. I know that maybe sound like an excuse, but damn it, mm. it's hard. It's not easy. <laughs> even in even in a digital, very anonymous way, it's not natural for me. So, um, so Diane, Diane, okay. let's let's uh, maybe briefly. Uh, <laughs> why why do you? Because you can go on for hours and hours and hours. And I won't. I won't. Um, <laughs> I, I'm curious if, and, and, I, and I want to just bring this up, if, if anyone is on and they have any questions or comments, we're going to have, yes, we're going to have a little Q&A at the end, or if you want to chime in and say, yeah, I, you know, I, yeah. I agree, Twitter and other annoyances, yes, yes, or no, I love Twitter, we'd love to hear from you. Yes, there's um, a, a Q&A uh, field in the Google Hangout that you should be able to access and uh, you can ask your questions in there. We can see them. So at the end, we'll, we'll try to field any questions that come through. 
Yeah. Cool. So, so okay. So, <laughs> uh, why do you love Twitter? Why do you love Twitter? In 140 <laughs> characters. In 140 characters. <laughs> I I wish I could only receive tech me text messages up to 140 characters at a time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. Nice, nice um, so why I love Twitter? Okay, we've talked about this where I have said between Twitter. Facebook, Instagram, or what have you, whatever social media platform, I always say, this is how I measure it, right? How has it enhanced my life, either personally or professionally or both, right? And time and time again, I've got a gazillion examples of Twitter, real life examples, real life people, stories, experiences, Right. Right. Sure. Sure. Tons of them. Facebook, Instagram, like not so much. I have some, some, right. very few. But Twitter, it, like, it's it, the ratio is about fifty to one. Right on. Right on. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, as far as when I say, you know, in did I say enhance my life or is that the word I, I said? <laughs> Right. Uh, you know, yeah, no, something like that, right? Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I've got so I got a few stories of, of examples, right? And it's right. not just the stories, but how they came about through Twitter. Right. And I think the first one is, you know, really to me, when when you first told me the story, it was really, really powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I think it goes to what we now know Twitter is really powerful for, right? It's, yeah, it's the new, it's the news. And, uh, um, <clears throat> so this is, this is, uh, going back kind of set up. What, what, are, what is the picture that we're looking at? This is a picture of the tsunami that happened in Japan that we all know about in 2010. Right. Right. I think so. Yeah. So here's what happened. I, I got a uh, an alert on my cell phone as I do once in a blue moon if something major is going on, major world news, and I got this alert on my cell phone that there was uh, a, a major earthquake in Japan, right? So I instantly go on, you know, the um, news online and I hear about this, and then all of a sudden it's this huge tsunami that's coming, and it's all on the northern coast of Japan. Well, my mother, she lived, she was living in the northern coast of Japan. She's lived there for many years. And that's all I heard, right? Just huge, like catastrophic news. And all they would say is northern coast of Japan. Right. So immediately I try and call my mom on via Skype and I can't get through. And I'm seeing these images like this right. one. This is a crazy image and this is like split diagonally. So we're seeing the same area, one before the tsunami and one after the tsunami as the, that water mm -hmm. is coming over uh, that, yep. that retaining wall. And that's just, I remember seeing the photos and I can't imagine if one of my parents or my parents were living there, what would have been going on in my mind. Exactly. Like, you know, and I can't get through, and, and I am just envisioning she has been washed away and and that she's dead. And right. uh, and if she's alive, maybe she's holding on to a branch, or I don't know, right? And right. So I'm so what happened was, <clears throat> and again, this is back in 2010, so I, I don't know how popular it was to do this back then. And I'm tweeting. Right, trying to get information. Right. I'm looking for hashtags and of the town she lives in, and everything is being tweeted in, in Japanese or kanji, right? So sure. I can't read it. I don't know what's going on. But what happens is some a Twitter follower of mine, someone that we um, tweet back and forth to, her brother is in the military for the US and is wow. stationed in the same town as my mom. And so she tweeted back to me and we had some DMs and uh, direct messages. And she said, she was telling me what was going on because she could reach him. Right. Because the communication lines were open to the you know, US military in Japan. 
And she was telling me what was going on in my mother's town, telling me that they were all relocated to like a shelter for safety. And so still, okay, I'm like, okay, that's that's good news. And but this woman, and her name is Mimi, <laughs> said that she would have her brother go there and wow. look for my mother to make sure that she is alive. Wow. Okay. Long story short, <laughs> uh, my mom was fine and uh, she didn't get swept away and, and but she uh, had the ringer on her phone very low because with the earthquake, the power went out, it was very cold and she was bundled in blankets and she didn't hear right. the phone ringing. <laughs> but even still, I will remember that for the rest of my life. Yeah, that's just, it's an amazing story that, again, I think that's the real power of, of social media. We know that's the power of social media and with Twitter too. Like we saw it with um, the, uh, in Egypt with the political um, unrest there and how Twitter uh, was the only way that news was getting out of that uh, area during that time. And then with the Boston Marathon bombings, we saw how Twitter mm -hmm. was a way for people to communicate. So, you know, how, you know, I can't really go, oh yeah, I hate Twitter because of that. I think this is just an amazing, it's, it's that one of, you know, that's one of the reasons that story is one of the reasons why I have started coming over to the other side where I don't dislike Twitter so much when uh, you, you know, you, you hear stories like that from a person that you know, and you go, wow, that's just, how amazing is that? So it's really like, I think t Twitter is powerful and we know this because it's, it's powerful in, um, emergency situations right so mm -hmm. and it's also location specific so that's i think the real power of hashtags is if you're doing a, a location specific hashtag when something is going on in an emergency situation right yep very cool very cool and uh okay so so now the <laughs> next story diane <laughs> i like this one too like i think i think that story about your mother is probably the most powerful one but this is a really great one because it shows, again, the local community and what what can happen if you if you really just put something out there, right? So why is this monitor <laughs> just sitting here blank? On our no, this is this is a pretty less is a far less dramatic uh, you know story. But here I am. I'm on my computer at home. I'm on a desktop with a flat screen monitor, and it's flickering and it's and all of a sudden it dies. Okay, so I've got a dead monitor, bummer. And I tweet out, and I tweet out, hey, you know, this died, and I'm, anyone have a spare monitor? Right. Well, sure enough, I get a tweet back, and within hours I have, for me, a brand new monitor that was, uh, you know, someone had an extra one, an old one laying around. And this is someone that I knew through Twitter for a good while, and I came by and picked it up. Right, and you hadn't met them in real life, right? You would, you'd only well, communicated through Twitter. Well, I had, oh, I met them through Twitter. Right. First, and then later met them in real life. Right. Right. So, but it's I knew them from Twitter first. Right. That's crazy. That's just so so simple. And again, the thing we were talking about. Um, earlier was that that your first inclination your the first thought in your head was hey i'm just going to tweet this yeah right and put it out there and again kind of going back to why maybe i have hesitancy with twitter is that that's not my normal uh, thought process i wouldn't have thought right. you know twitter's the way to to go with this it would be you know that's just and I think getting over that hurdle um, eventually will help me get over my my uh, dislike. I can't even say it's a dislike anymore. Let's. I just uh, let me be honest. I just can't even say it's a dislike. Like I, I hated it originally. I hated it, but you have over the course of you've worn me down a little bit. <laughs> I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> All right. I'm hearing. I'm hearing this. But until I see it, 
Okay. Right. <laughs> right. So the and the the takeaway on this, and and I I like this, is that ask for help and tell people what you need, and that's a great, uh, you know, I think that's just a great suggestion. Consider and I, and maybe like a, a younger audience does look at social media like that, you know, where their social media is just very natural for them. You know, I'm in my early 40s now. And even though I consider myself fairly technical um, and that I, I love technology, I love Google Hangouts, I love, um, so I do like social media, but it's not my first inclination. It's not a, a habit as far as the way that I would communicate. So ask for right, help and tell say, people what you Younger know. people, younger people, I am six months older than you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Just, just had to get that in. Well, oh, thanks. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so the next story is a yes. kind of a cool one too. I like this story as well. <laughs> so this is Rob and Allison. And so, uh, Rob is a film score, film score. That's the term, right? Ah, Composer yes. and film score. And Allison is a producer in film. And, uh, years ago I was studying film producing and film financing at UCLA. And Allison had tweeted out asking if anyone wanted to intern. She was looking for an intern um, for her films while she was producing. And I, the next day we had coffee and here I am interning for Allison. The thing is, I'd, I'd go to their home uh, every weekday, you know, in the morning and I'd work on the paperwork, uh, we do, I mean, we just do so much back office stuff and then we'd work on sets together, you know, working on sets as long hours. And so this is like, you know, full time, right? It's Monday through you know, Friday, you know, back right, office film right. sets. And so we got to know each other very, very well and we became good friends. And like now it's like I go to there, I go, we spend some holidays together sometimes, birthdays, um, birthday celebrations and I even went to their wedding That's so my point is you just don't know what things are gonna lead into right, right it's like you, right. you get to know people on Twitter you meet them in real life and then you wind up making these really close long-lasting friendships right I mean you know being so close that you you attend their wedding and one of my good friends too Brenda we met on Twitter and to me, a good friend is anyone who will help you move. And and Brenda, if you're on, can yeah. consider me a good friend, as I know you do. But um, and That's you know, so awesome. now we know each other on real life. I mean, I've just right. got so many stories of people who are, are the closest to me on a day to day basis and mean a lot to me. And you know, they're from Twitter. Right. Sorry, yeah. I jumped. I jumped the gun there on the on the. <laughs> I accidentally hit the next slide. Yeah, but yeah, you're moving me along. Yeah, sorry. I was. <laughs> don't get too wordy, Diane. Don't get too wordy. <clears throat> don't get out of control. No. So the the and it's kind of along the same lines. This the, the next story that you're going to share with us is um, you, you're in California and you were doing this crazy, uh, amazing uh, thirty day Bikram yoga challenge where you had to go to 30 classes in 30 days and uh for anybody listening it was just it, to, to hear <laughs> diane <laughs> it complain was, about it every day to oh you oh <laughs> my gosh every single day this this lady was doing like and she had other like she was doing events and uh, other things in her life and getting in sometimes you were going to what like two or three in a day sometimes yeah, because I was out of town twice that month, so I had to do doubles. I had to do a lot of doubles. So, yeah. so, so right. So then, you you were posting photos during this whole time of you doing this be from your right. challenge, and what came out of that? Yeah. So that. this is a photo. It has my name on the board, and you can see I have thirty stickers, and I'm like, woohoo! So I tweeted this, and what happened was someone tweeted back to me, hey, I think we go to the same yoga studio. Now, I did not hashtag the town or the name of the studio or anything, but someone found me. I'm like, ooh, you know, cool. And so we started 
you know, tweeting back and forth to each other. And then we had lunch together. And this person lives, I don't know, maybe three miles down the street from me. And we work in the same industry. Right. Right. And the point I want to make here is I feel like a lot of times when people use Twitter for business purposes or have a business account, they're so narrow in thinking, oh, I can only tweet about business or I'm only going to follow people who are in, you know, blah, 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 you know. And right. it's like, you know, just be your normal self, right? And right. engage with people who you like and who right. you find interesting because you just don't know, uh, you know, being your normal self, you will attract like people. Right. And even if they're not in your industry, you know, they may refer you business or vice versa because you have a strong connection. And here I am tweeting about yoga and this guy lives down the street from me and we're in the same industry. Right. And I think that's really uh, a good point because especially with solopreneurs, uh, small businesses, you know, that are, you know, local businesses where if you're tweeting about things that you're do you're just naturally doing that you find enjoyable, people are going to be able to connect with you on that level. And like you said, you never know really who you're talking to. They may be in the same industry, just, you know, from Bikram yoga, you, you know, this random person shows up and, uh, you, you make that connection. So yeah, that's really, uh, it's really a powerful aspect of Twitter. Again, it's widening that social net, right? That's, that's really what right. it's about. Uh, okay. And do we have, do we have one more story? Yeah, man. We have one more. Oh, that's yeah, cool. one more quick story. So, right. uh, back in, what was it? 2012? I think I, 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 I was living in the we on the west <laughs> on the <laughs> west coast <laughs> and I decided to go to New York for several months me and my dog and I was writing a book right and so this is a photo of back in LAX so after several months of living in New York me and my dog flew back to California and I I needed a ride because I didn't park my car at LAX to have a month of parking fees and it's not that I couldn't bring my dog in a taxi, but uh, my dog's not big enough for under the seat, so we had to go in cargo. Right. And cargo at LAX is about, I don't know, a mile and a half or two miles away from the terminals, and there are no taxis. It's like, you know, this warehouse, warehousey kind of right. building that's right. kind of abandoned. So here I am. That, that's, that's my dog. Uh, this the, is the, this the is guy in the Right, yeah, right yeah. there. The guy on the right in the orange vest, and he's carrying my dog, and that's my face <laughs> pressed up against the chain link fence, like, my dog, my dog. <laughs> and um, I needed a ride because there were no taxis, and I didn't have a car. So what, you know, so what did I do in advance? Twitter. Twitter. Okay, so this person that I know from Twitter gave me a ride. Now, the point I wanted to make about this story is, this was the first time I met this person. Okay, so that's all right. So that might sound a little shady and creepy, like oh my god, right? Right. But, but you knew, yeah, you knew people that knew exactly, this person, right? exactly. Right. So even though I, he and I had tweeted back and forth to each other for years, right? Right. Right. People I knew in real life knew this person. Knew in real him life. in real right. life. So you're seven so, degrees of Kevin Bacon, basically. Right. Right. We're not saying tweet out there and just, you know, the, Take rides the, first, from strangers. the first Yahoo that <laughs> <laughs> tweets you. <laughs> right. Don't, don't jump in. Don't jump in a car with them. That's not but, probably a good idea. But, but the point is, it's, it's not just, um, you know, a single account, right? It's a community. Right, because my community of people I know on Twitter and Twitter and then on real life, we're part of this community and they knew him in real life and you know, we're we all know each other right. through Twitter. Right. Right. So So right. Get to know people over time. You can get to know good you and you can have really solid relationships and friendships with people 
that uh, you've met through Twitter, right? I mean, right. it's not oh, just yeah. it's, it's not it's not a, an arm's length kind of conversation or relationship. It's a it's a real it's a real honest to goodness. You're getting to know these yeah. people, and they are real people. They're not just bots, even though some of some of what is on Twitter are bots, absolutely. But yeah, we're gonna get to that. Yeah, we'll get to that in just a second. But they are real people, and uh, it's just it, it is amazing that you can connect like that over social. Yeah. Media. So I guess if I were to just uh, to summarize this is the people who I'm friends with in real life right now. So many of them I know from Twitter first, and si that's as simple as that. Right. Right. That's an, yeah. So now we've gone through the stories. We've shared your experiences, why you love Twitter so much. Um, the now we're gonna you're gonna share some tips that you've used uh, over the years and that have helped me um, <coughs> to to start Excuse at least. Me. No worries. Keep it in. Settle down over there, Beck. Settle down. Yeah. <laughs> um, Again, and if you guys have any questions or comments, if you had a related experience and you're watching, there's a, a chat box, a Q&A. If you're watching on Google Hangouts on Air, the Q&A button's on the left-hand side. Just click that. I believe that if you're watching, you click that, and it'll open up the chat box, and you can type in any questions you might have there. Um, and yeah, uh, and now we're going to talk about tips, some recommendations on ways of growing your audience, right? Of, and and right. how you specifically have grown your audience. We're not saying that these are, right. Well, okay, <laughs> two points. One, we went from five to four. <laughs> oh, right, sorry. <laughs> right, right, so we have four recommendations. Four recommendations. And my second point is, this is not about how to grow your followers. To me, what I'm what I'm recommending as far as tips is how to enjoy Twitter more. Right. Well, I so, think too, I yeah. do think this will help grow. I think this. Yeah, that's it, true. It, that's true. Product, it, it does help grow your your community. So you're, the you're first right, one. You're right. Yeah, I, I thought because that because that to me that's not that's never the number one. It's like growing is not number one. I want to enjoy it. And as I enjoy it, it just grows. Then it right? grows. So. Right. Absolutely. I th that's what I think the byproduct is. So the first tip is? Is lists, right? So you talked about how you know your home feed, is, you know, when you first got onto Twitter, it's like all this stuff and all this stuff. It's like, absolutely. I rarely, rarely, and when I say rarely, I'm, I'm like not even like daily, right? Go into my home feed. I only go to my lists. So right. creating lists of different categories and um, adding accounts that I find interesting, funny, people I know in real life, people I want to know, right? So I right, have right. I have lists for funny inspiration. I got a list called Peeps. I have a list called Friends. I got a list called Interesting One. And I got a list called Interesting Two. Right? But just interesting. Right. For different reasons. Right. And I, and I, and yeah. So when I when I look at my Twitter feed, I'm looking about at about 80 different accounts, and I recognize every avatar because I find them interesting and I interact with them. Not right. every day, but you know. Sure. And I think that's of of all the uh, recommendations, all the tips um, that you've shared with me before. You know, we we did this live. I think lists were the ones that uh, are the one that has helped really not feeling so overwhelmed with it, being able to organize it into uh, digestible chunks of getting organized. And since you've been telling me about lists and maybe it's just that because it's in my awareness now, I've seen multiple articles over the last couple of months about using lists and organizing into lists. And if, I'm not the best at uh, other aspects of what you're going to talk about, um, but I have gotten organized with lists, and when I follow people, they go into lists, and that really has helped uh, being targeted with how I can communicate and 
and and again not feeling so overwhelmed with it so lists are so, super important yeah i mean list is nothing new but i so i once in a while i will look at my home feed and if i see an interesting tweet then i go into that person's account and i look at their feed and if, I, if it was a one hit wonder then they don't go on a list but if they have consistent tweets that i i think are interesting then i add them to a list right. and vice versa if i'm looking at my list and someone in um in that feed list is like i don't know really out there then i'll boot them sure 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 yeah All right cool and uh so next we have scheduling tweets and this is a big one too because this is a an area <laughs> that um i'm not resistant to it per se but it's another <laughs> one of those where like maybe the down i am a little resistant it, <laughs> <laughs> but it's not um you know consistency is important right and and scheduling tweets and tweet deck is a really awesome tool that you use that you helped me to to get consistent with um posting so do you want to like just talk a little bit about like how you approach um your scheduling sure so i use tweet deck for scheduling and i don't do a lot of scheduling, but this is why I use it. One is um, if I know I'm, you know, so there's not a lot of dead space of, I don't know, 10 hours of nothing. And then all of a sudden I'm, I sit down and I'm tweet, 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 right? So just to keep it consistent, like Jason said. So this way I could tweet things out, you know, further out in the day or maybe the next day and that's good and it keeps it kind of spotty so because if you're not being consistent people will drop you if you're not tweeting people will drop you right and i drop people if they're not tweeting regularly and by regularly it's different for everyone right. so there's being consistent in using scheduling right especially if i'm like, going to be on an airplane for 10 hours or and i don't want to deal with twitter for the entire day so to put it out there, but also is so that I don't sit down and have, you know, I'm just all of a sudden I'm sending out 12 tweets in one sitting and bombarding someone's feed because that too is annoying and people will unfollow you. Right. Right. You don't want to send 12 tweets and then nothing for three days. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so re real quick, real quick, we got a question mm -hmm. and, and okay. I thought it was, a, it was an interesting one. In, one that you could touch on it kind of goes back to what we were talking about with the list this is yeah. jimmy it's either jimmy t wiz or jimmy oh, twiz jimmy right? twiz jimmy twiz i love you jimmy twiz <laughs> so he, he, he's asking private or public lists right private or public lists, oh, yeah, yeah. um doesn't matter you know what now go ahead <laughs> okay go ahead because i was thinking like i know that like public list if someone goes to my uh, account um mm -hmm. they can see the the public list so they can see which list and which people i have in public lists and we yeah, talked about yeah. this before that that's a great way of finding other people that you might be interested in absolutely i love it when i am following someone for a long time and i find they're that they're interesting and then all of a sudden i see they have a public list i'm like ooh, i'm sure all these people are very interesting too thank you right. and you know they usually are and right. i now i feel pretty selfish because all of i think that is a very nice thing to do right. and i feel like i should do it too and i i should get on myself and open some of my lists to public right. um but then i have like I, all of them are right now are on lockdown and they're private and you know they're peeps right, right. Well, and i know, have i, I, I have I both too. That. i have yeah i have both and it was after you know we talked um that i opened up my list because initially all of my lists were private the same way and i thought ah you know i really because when you told me that it was a great way of finding other people that you could follow I was like, ah, maybe somebody would follow me and they want to look at my lists and see who I'm following and see if there's anybody interesting. Right. Me. So Especially my, when, when their list has a really good label on it, very specific label. Yeah. Right. Like, cause I'm a project management consultant, you know, 
we never did our intros, did we? <laughs> Who we are, what we do. <laughs> yeah, um, but you know, if if I see someone as a list and and it says project managers, I'm like, great. Right. I try to make mine kind of interesting, my public list. So like I have superhero consultants or ninja team, you know, whatever, ninja team artists, or I'm a professional magician. So I have my, you know, uh, now you see them, now you don't magician list. So, you know, I try to make it interesting. I so if somebody that. does look at my list, they're like, oh, they might, you know, just the title of the list might intrigue them to want to look at it. So I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully that helps, uh, Jimmy. I think that answers I, the question. I'm going to. Um, I'm going to. Yes, thank you. I'm going to take it upon myself to by Monday. I'm going to create. I'm going to open up some of my lists to public. Nice. And and I'm going to tweet back Jimmy Twiz that I've nice, done. Nice, so. Jimmy. High five to Jimmy Twiz out there for. Uh, <laughs> For spurring and, uh, Diane to, to open up some of her lists. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. I'm just curious. I have I have Jimmy Twiz. You are on my private list called Interesting. Oh, nice. Congratulations, Jimmy Twiz. <laughs> so, so OK, you know. so we'll jump back. We'll jump back into <laughs> what we were just talking about. Thanks again for the question, Jimmy. That was really awesome. Um, we were talking about scheduling tweets yeah. and uh, we were talking about just kind of a frequency maybe that right. you use tweet deck and just so you, that you're not steady. like, blow, yeah, you're not blowing up someone's feed with, cause that's a, a thing that I tend to do is when I do <laughs> jump on Twitter, it's like, uh, <laughs> and, you know, and I know, and I'm very conscious about it now after our conversation. Oh my like, gosh. Cause I don't like it when it happens to me. There's a particular guy that I'm following. He's um he's a marketer. I use uh was uh I'm a consultant in branding and marketing, and so I follow a lot of marketing people. And there's a guy in Australia that I follow, and bless his heart, he blows up my feed when it's you know morning in Australia. My Twitter feed blows up with his posts, and it's like every you know, it might even be like every three minutes, but my goodness, it's like every three minutes, it's like I'm getting, and it's all photos. It's all image posts. So it's like just, it's, it, it, it overwhelms my feed. And it's a little annoying, so. Yeah, and it stings because sometimes these people, I really do like their tweets and I don't want to unfollow them and, but anyway. Right, okay, so use TweetDeck. It's a great way to schedule posts. You schedule yours uh, generally the night before. You kind of yeah, go through I, and you I have like. I don't like to schedule it like too far out. You know, it's just, right. you know, just. Because you never know what's going to happen. And you want to be a little current. Oh, you don't this have is, to. okay, you, you know, I have these crazy fears in life, right? I'm, I'm right. you know, with my OCD, one of my biggest fears is I'm going to die and my house is going to be a mess. Right. But I already, I already have someone to clean my house if I'm in a coma, <laughs> if I'm in a coma, so that my home is clean before I die. It's <laughs> continuing project management. But what? But also, you know, I'm gonna die, and my Twitter account is to keep tweeting. <laughs> yeah, weeks out, weeks out, you'll be tweeting. Oh, that's a little weird. That's that's a little. I'll, I'll have to find you could I'll designate you in my will to make sure that doesn't happen. All right, I'll I'll, I'll be the social media um, <laughs> annihilator, <laughs> basically taking down all the. Okay. All the so um, so kind of going along in line, uh, not only scheduling tweets but now talking about curating, right, right. and using so, another tool which is really cool, yeah. which is Manage Flitter. Yeah, so there's, there's only two more points um, right. left to make, and this is the second to last, and that's Curate. So <clears throat> I, I personally use Manage Flitter, <laughs> right. which I usually call Manage Unflitter for some reason, but Manage Flitter, and basically I just go in. Because you unfollow people. Yes, yes. So I, you know, how many, I probably use it every, I don't know, three or four days. And I just go in there and I see, I go into my account and I see who's not following me back, 
who has no avatar, so they have an egg head, right? Right. Foreign languages, which you know, it shows who's tweeting in a foreign language, which I don't necessarily unfollow because people are bilingual and trilingual and whatever, right? And right. then the fourth thing is who is um, like inactive or not tweeting often, right? Right. So what I, what I, and this is, I use manage Flitter to unfollow people who, I'm not gonna say are deadbeats, but you know, it's a give and take. So if you're not given and taken, Right, so, you gotta be you gotta be in there mixing it up, playing the game. Yeah, so I I unfollow people through Manage Flitter if they have an egghead, right? <laughs> Just out of principle, um, uh, I will unfollow. I look at who's not tweeting, and if I see you know you're you, for me personally, if you haven't tweeted since February of this year or back, I unfollow. Right unless I know you personally, right? I unfollow all those. And it's amazing how many people, how many accounts haven't tweeted in like 2000, since 2012 or something. You know, it's like unfollow, unfollow, yeah, unfollow. That would have been, been me. <laughs> oh my gosh. We talked about really this the other day, man. Yeah, you are the I, typical, you are, you're lucky. I know, I've, I've I know. Given I'm you how many second you chances. Me. <laughs> because your name, your account came up on Manage Flitter for inactive accounts. I know, after and four I, days, after only four I, days, yeah. and yeah, so I think scheduling using TweetDeck to to schedule. I just again, it goes back to why one of the reasons I hate Twitter is that I feel like, well, one, I've never had to work this hard on. Uh, well, I feel that it's work, right? So it hasn't started becoming fun yet. And we've talked about uh, on other social right. media platforms because I love Instagram. I love taking photographs. I'm really into photographs. I love learning how and seeing other photographs and seeing how people are framing shots and things <laughs> like that. With and and you're like, no, nah, who cares? It's just another uh, yeah. sunset. It's I, another I've got pretty a fan flower. Of Instagram because I'm like, okay, we could have a whole photos. Instagram lover hate. I, I could Google pretty photos. Right. I, I mean, I like Instagram seeing the photos of people I know and what they're up to. That's cool. But I could also get that on Twitter. Right. So, and it's, so yeah, right now I haven't found, I haven't found my fun in Twitter. I know it's there mm -hmm. uh, and I'm starting to, I'm starting to, you know, get over, uh, you know, I'm putting my, my dislike for it aside and, uh, Try, trying to find the fun stuff. So. Yeah, and and the the third thing that I unfollow on on Manage Flitter. So I talked about the egg, egg heads and then people who don't tweet. And you know, four days to me, that's I give way more leeway. I, four days and you haven't tweeted, no biggie. But like three right. months, uh, three or four months. Yeah. Um, but the third reason I unfollow people is, you know, if I go into my Manage Flitter and say I have a thousand people who aren't following me back. And I go to the, 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 the furthest out. And if I don't recognize, if you're not following me and I don't recognize your avatar and I've been following you for six months or eight months, why, 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 right? I mean, there are a lot of people who don't follow me back, but I know their avatar because I follow them and I find them interesting. So I'm like, okay, don't follow me back. No, no, no problem. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So cool. And if you guys are watching uh, live again, there's a question and answer uh, field. If you have questions or comments or you want to chime into the conversation, just uh, post in there and uh, we will see those and we can answer those. So the, the last point, I think we're on the last point. Yeah. Um, we switched it up last minute. Uh, we were going to do an extra one and we we're like, eh, it just doesn't feel right. So the last one is my favorite because it really cracked me up. You had no idea who this person was. So no. if you're watching this or Diane is not a Trekkie, I'm just going to come out and say it. Diane is not a Trekkie. She had no idea. She what did I call this? You kept, I kept saying that man. That man, this man. <laughs> it was just, it was cracking me up. So she typed. If, if you know anything about yes, if you know anything about Star Trek and you type in the word engage into Google, she said, and then there were all of these pictures 
of this man. <laughs> and it was Captain Picard. <laughs> And, and, then like, I I and then I mis and then I misquoted him, right? Because what's the thing? So be it. Let it be. No, like make it life. so. Make it so. <laughs> She's not, so not a Trekkie. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but I thought, oh, so I'm like, well, this kept coming up. Is this relevant for our PowerPoint? <laughs> She's like, do you think anyone will know who this is? And like, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's like millions of people hey, who are gonna know who this is. I don't know this guy, but it, I I trust you. You're an, an exception to the rule. <laughs> So yeah, don't follow, don't just follow, really get engaged. And that's, right. again, it's kind of like, I'll be honest, this goes back to one of my, and and I'll say it, It's I, I guess it's a fear in a sense of being in, in a conversation and not knowing, you know, how to engage. Not know, Again, it's like, okay, I 140 characters, uh, I have to uh, keep my responses concise and short and get across what I want you can't be like crazy you can't write like novels I have a friend uh, on Facebook I have a couple of friends on Facebook that are like me that are very verbose and when they respond to a comment especially if it's something that they're passionate about it's not like a back and forth I feel like Twitter's a very quick very um, speedy conversation back and forth where on Facebook you can write paragraphs of stuff and mentally switching over to the 140 characters, it's it's difficult to engage like that, especially if you're not used to writing. And I know we go back and forth on this, but, and I know it's something I have to just get over, but. You know. I, let me just say, in our Twitter relationship, I am I am always engaging to you, and you are almost never engaging to me. Right, I it's, again, right. it's. I have to those... engage with you, and then you'll respond. And then I respond. I'm not much for because again, it's not my natural, and I'm. It is an excuse, and it's something that I'm working on. But it's not my natural way of thinking or communicating. So getting used to using it as that kind of a platform. And then you know, before when we were talking, you had said, "Yeah, you know, I, I don't know what to tweet about, right?" And like, you know, yeah. oh, you know, tweeting, you know, I'm gonna tweet my lunch, right? Who who wants to know about that? And and what what was my response? I said, me. Me, me I right. do. And and I gave the perfect example, and this happened yesterday, right? Right. For yesterday, lunch. one of my friends tweeted something about their lunch. And I'm I'm thinking, I know where this person lives. This person lives right next to me. Right? Mm -hmm. And it was a Peruvian restaurant. And so I got to engage with this person and ask, you know, how was the restaurant and you know, how was the food? Is this a place where I could get some white fish with a little lime and some, you know, spice? And they said, yes, right. they explained the outdoor seating, blah, blah, blah. And I got a, a not only did I get a restaurant recommendation based on, a, you know, someone's lunch, right? But I got to interact with them and ask them live questions. Right. Can I get this kind of uh, meal there? What's the seating like? You know, I got an idea of the price range. Right. And, so, I think and that's just someone really, tweeting lunch. Yeah, and I think, you know, that's, uh, you know, for the, for like, we'll, we'll just call them stodgy old people uh, that were like, I don't want to know anything about your shopping or, you know, where you're going to lunch. I don't need to see pictures of your food. I can look at my food, you know. The power of being against a solopreneur a small business owner or building a personal brand or building a small brand, we know that the power of word of mouth is the most powerful form of marketing. And when you have engagement like that, one to one, that creates a much more uh, impactful experience for, for a person that's, that possibly might be engaging with your brand. So, you know, I'm not, I can't discount, you know, that, um, cause I take pictures of not, not as much, but if I do, I put those on Instagram. I don't use Twitter necessarily as a platform. Um, but I think it is a great way to connect. And like we were saying before, you know, I think it, it's a way for our friends to be with us as much as they want to be with us. 
So you were with your friend at lunch and you almost enjoy, not a, enjoying her lunches or his lunch as much as they were, but you could get that experience vicariously through social media. And I think that's a really powerful thing. I, I bet you if I tweeted out, anyone have a recommendation for a Peruvian restaurant in blank town that I live in? If I tweeted that out, put hashtags, Right. You know what I mean? I mean, this is how I, I think, right? It's better sure. than Yelp. So that's yeah. an, one example. Oh, yeah. No, for sure. It's way better than Yelp. Yelp's but dude, dude, also, okay. it, I wanted to just say this one last point, too, is because Twitter, being on Twitter versus not being on Twitter, right? So imagine you're friends with someone and you're not on Twitter. Neither one of you are on Twitter. And maybe you talk to each other or you send an email maybe once every month, every few months, right. to catch up, right? But on Twitter, I feel like I get to know people on a day-to-day -day basis, so people on my list, right, or people I interact with. I see their frustrations, right. <laughs> their rants, right, their joys, their photos, you know, what's going on in their lives, what they like, what they eat, what they're doing, like on a day-to-day -day basis. And when you like see that and know that, you know, interchangeably over, you know, day-to-day -day, over weeks and months and years, I feel like you right. really get to know that person well, yeah. like much better than uh, potential, you know, it's, a, it's different, but then someone you just talk to maybe once every six months. Sure. You get to know their lifestyle. Yeah, totally. Yeah, uh, it's just again, it's it's a habit that you have to, or that I have to get over. So, you know, it's uh, oh well, say it, say it. I'm get, I'm getting so, there. I'm getting there. So what so what now, were the just a recap? What were the five points again? That it was um, lists. Yep. Create lists. Curating them. Okay. Curating yep. those lists. Managing them. <laughs> Yep, and then um, engaging. What was it, manage Flitter, which manage is Flitter. we had scheduling. Manage, oh yeah, and scheduling. Scheduling uh, using, tw for tweet example, deck. tweet deck and being consistent, and yep. then uh, engaging. And so then engaging. those were the four. Those okay. were the four points. Really, really strong, and we got rid of a couple over the course of today and or yesterday and today. So then. Um, the question that we wanted to throw out to everybody, whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching this on the replay, um, it'll be up. It's going to go up on uh, your YouTube channel, correct, Diane the Higher Techie? I think, I don't know, both of ours. I'm not it's sure. Go up on, yeah, it'll go up on mine for sure, uh, Jason Weathington, and then it's going to go up on yours, the Higher Techie. Um, it'll be on both of our blogs um, and uh, connect with us. Uh, through Twitter to answer these questions. What was your favorite idea from tonight? Favorite concept? Maybe you have a story as well that you want to tweet to us. What did you get? What was your favorite idea from tonight? And why do you? What do you love or hate about Twitter the most? Like, do you love it <laughs> unconditionally, like Diane does, or are you kind of still on the fence? I'm, I'm moving to the. I'm, I'm sitting on the fence right now with my love hate. Some days I love it, some days I hate it. I'm, I'm going to kick you over the fence. <laughs> no. So, and then you can connect with <laughs> us, engage with us on uh, Twitter um, at our, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Our, our, our Twitter it's handles. Handles. Yeah, is that what they are? So, uh, Diane accounts. is at Beck Diane. Uh, she, she's there. She's also, her company is, uh, at the hired techie. And that's where she posts a lot of really cool articles and stuff on the tech industry. And, um, you keep it pretty fresh and keep it, uh, fun. And this is a new thing for me. I like, like I said, I am no guru in social media, no, but, but I do numbers. enjoy look at those Twitter. numbers, right? Look so, at those numbers. So your, your ratio of following uh, and followers is really good. Obviously, like you said, I mean, you're, you're using, you're going out, you're, you know, talking to people that you want to talk to. So you're following a lot. 
and then the it's the follow don't follow you know follow follow game basically and you've built you know you're over a thousand followers now you went over yesterday and this this you took in the morning that screenshot uh you took in the morning and then by that afternoon we were on a call together and you're like oh, just went over a thousand which is just amazing to me so um you have a really good system and i think the four points that you talked about is a really good system to you know be targeted enjoy twitter but also build build your audience and you're following and, and then of course you look down there at little old me uh at jay wethington um again i'm super inconsistent all the points that you listed with the exception of lists with the exception of lists i'm horrible at doing and i admit it i admit it that i'm horrible about doing it but uh you know i just have to get better i have to get better about being more consistent scheduling out tweets and just tweeting about having an opinion about something engaging in conversations uh, and managing and really managing it because like right now um and these numbers are still probably pretty accurate i think i've picked up a couple of followers I'm, i maybe pick up two to three followers a day is is all i've been doing and this number by the way and i've really only been really actively involved in twitter for maybe a little over a month and that number was i think it was like at 75 when you and i first started talking about this thing so it has I grown would love it. i would love it if anyone watching or sees this on the replay will uh engage, engage with my friend jay weathington and uh please do please say hi i mean geez. it's it, again it's not my natural i'm i'm not an instigator as far as i'm an introvert not as an excuse but that's just my natural personality even though i'm an I, introvert too i know i know you but all right let's let's yeah, wrap up yeah but you're a new york introvert and that's different <laughs> I was born in I no I was raised in a village. Not a not a city, not a town in a village. Yeah. And an introvert. Yeah. Country bunkin. Yeah. All right. Here. So same. anyway, so I'll share let me share those again just in case. Um I'll put those up on the screen just in case anybody wants to uh yes. I would love uh, I would love to hear from people and hear what you love or hate about Twitter or any any comments. Even more so, I I would love it if you would help me show Jason Weathington how awesome Twitter is and show him some love. And I don't <laughs> believe me, Twitterverse. I am trying. I am trying. Guys, I aggravate the hell out of my friend here most days. We yeah. get into these, and it does. It's like they are. It's not arguments. We don't get into arguments, but we certainly get into debates and. After 45 minutes of trying to convince me about Twitter, she's just like I can feel the energy just like okay, right. I'm just done. <laughs> well, I I feel like this is this is part of the start of the end because I I told you the other day, you know, you're saying, "Oh yeah, I know I got to be consistent. I know I got to engage blah blah blah, but you're not doing right. it." And so I said, "If you're not going to do that, I don't want to hear about it anymore." And right. about how you don't like it. So that's right. that and that's all I have to say. Period. <laughs> Period, and for this Google Hangout. Hey, I think that's a great, uh, great way to, to, to end it. Um, thanks, Diane, for the, I, you know, really, I appreciate <laughs> all of your advice, everything that you uh, talk about. I think you're, they're really good points. And again, like you said, just doing it, just getting in there, and then, and, and mixing it up. So, cool. Thanks to everyone who who watched. And if you're watching the replay, connect with Diane, connect with myself on Twitter, say hello, and uh, we'll be sure to uh, follow you back yeah. if you're not a bot or posting any <laughs> crazy stuff. The three criteria is if uh, we'll follow back if, as long as you don't uh, have like tweets that are horribly demeaning to women, right. two, racist, and three, bots or selling Twitter accounts. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. So don't do those things and and uh, Diane will follow you back and I'll follow you back too. So connect with us. Thank you guys again for watching. It was really a lot of fun. Diane, as always, love our conversations. They're so much fun. <laughs> so have a good night. We'll see everybody later. <laughs>